Do you remember back when the biggest diss you could tell an ex-lover was that you wouldn't want to get back with them even if they were the last person on Earth? What if someone was the last person in all of space? Would you live out your days alone? This is 2016's Passengers. Spoiler alert! While I might be giving you my opinion on the film, that's no substitute for watching it for yourself. Links to the film are in the description. And for those of you that need to hear this, this is just a movie. All stunts are for the sake of story and shouldn't be attempted on your own. Viewer discretion is advised. We start off watching as the Avalon glides through space towards its destination. It's headed for the colony world of Homestead 2, and it's completely dormant. There are 258 crew members and 5,000 passengers in deep sleep on board. Suddenly, meteors start to hit the shields from the front, and the autopilot starts to plot a course through the upcoming asteroid field. It redirects its shields to the front of the ship, but a big asteroid hits it and some pieces of the rock make it through the shield. The ship tries to self-repair as many systems as it can, but one of the pods short circuits, and it starts to wake up the man inside. This is Jim and the sleep pod goes through the process of waking him up. Avalon walks him through the process of coming out of cryosleep, and she tells Jim that he's on the last stretch to Homestead 2. I don't know about you, but I've learned not to trust any motherboard programs in futuristic spaceships. Every single one turns on you and has ulterior motives. Don't trust her, Jim. Jim makes his way to his quarters, and Avalon tells him that he'll be part of the maintenance learning passengers once everyone comes out of hibernation. Jim tries his clothes on to find the perfect look for meeting everyone else, but when he goes to the auditorium, he's the only one that Avalon addresses. Jim tries to ask the ship why he's the only one there, and he starts to run through the halls of the ship yelling for anyone to answer. Jim makes his way to the big section of the ship where shops and all sorts of people should be hanging out at, but all he finds is the ship's computer. He finds out where he can find the crew and he heads to the bridge. He tries to make it into the bridge, but it requires special authorization. He can see inside though, and everyone's still asleep. Jim's next stop is the observatory, and he asks it where the ship is. This is where Jim finds out that he woke up 90 years too soon. That seems like an excessive oversight for complications. When he walks through the atrium, he finds a bartender cleaning the glasses at a bar. He tries to tell the man that they're in trouble, but the bartender doesn't seem too worried. Suddenly, Jim sees that this is an android, and his name is Arthur. Ah, see they did learn. They have an android, but he's stuck on a rail. He also has the most important job. If you're gonna be awake 90 years early, at least he's got a bartender android. Jim sleeps that night, and in the morning he starts reading the manuals for the hibernation pods. After working on it for part of the day, he tries it out, but he almost ends up trapping himself inside. His next plan of action is to try to cut his way into the bridge. He uses a sledgehammer first, and eventually he tries welding through it. None of his options work, but it's not like anyone's going to get mad at him for damaging the ship. After time passes, ship systems start to glitch, and he heads back to the bar with Arthur. After asking for some bartender wisdom from Arthur, he realizes that he shouldn't be worrying about stuff he can't control, and he starts to make the most of being the only one awake on the ship. <laughs> I'm sorry, but this would have been me the entire time. Everyone would have woken up in 90 years and they would have asked where all the alcohol went, why the theater has popcorn all over the place, and who broke into the Grand Suite. At first, Jim enjoys all of the luxuries that the Avalon has to offer, but eventually it gets nerve-wracking to be alone with all the comforts in the world. One day he walks through the hibernation area with a bottle of vodka, and he gets so furious that he tosses the bottle. He finds himself in the room where the spacewalking suits are, and he tries to feel human companionship by holding the suit. When that doesn't work, he suits up and heads out for his first spacewalk. He steps out of the airlock, and a tether attaches itself to his suit. Jim hangs by the tether as he looks out into the vast emptiness of space, and a tear falls down his cheek. When he comes back into the ship, he takes the suit off, but then he goes back into the airlock. He prepares to open the door that would send him tumbling through space, but he becomes scared and runs through the hibernation area. He ends up tripping on the vodka bottle and cries. When he stands up, he notices one of the pods has a beautiful woman in it, and he seems to forget all his troubles. Jim finds out that her name's Aurora, and he watches her video logs to find out more about her. She's a writer, and he absolutely loves her words. He finds it to be cruel that he'd find the perfect woman on the way to a planet he'll never see, but when he sees the hibernation pod manual, he gets an idea. He tries to ask Arthur for the answers to his morale question, but Arthur reminds him that he's just a robot. Jim goes back and forth over time on whether he's going to wake up Aurora or not. After thinking long and hard about it, he decides that he's going to wake her up. 
he tampers with her pod, and eventually, Avalon wakes up Aurora. Jim frantically packs up all of his tools and makes his way out of the hibernation room. After composing himself in his room, he comes to the atrium to greet Aurora. He gives her the rundown on being awake 89 years early, but he tells her that her pod just malfunctioned. If anyone was in this situation and thinks that this isn't going to come back to bite them in the butt, they're an idiot. You've got 89 years and a hibernation pod in your room. Someone's going to find out, and by someone, I mean the only other living being on the ship, thanks to your handiwork. By nighttime, Aurora decides that she's just going to go to bed, but she can't even imagine how Jim lasted over a year as the only human in the ship. After she leaves, Jim heads to the bar to talk to Arthur about the day. In the morning, Jim shows Aurora around the ship, and Jim finally gets to taste the finer thing since Aurora is a gold passenger. She tries to brainstorm some other options for getting back to sleep, but Jim tells her that he tried for over a year. He's done. Aurora tries to go through everything that Jim did, even breaking into the bridge. It doesn't work. But Jim starts to notice more systems in the ship acting odd. Aurora goes to interview Jim about why he decided to leave Earth, and he talks about what his hopes and dreams were for moving to Homestead 2. She tells him that her plan was to live on Homestead 2 for a year, and to come right back to Earth 150 years later. That's just a fancy way to time travel. This is like the ultimate failure for her now. She's not even going to get to her first stop on her 150 year time travel vacation. After enjoying the amenities of the Avalon, Jim and Aurora end up at the bar with Arthur, and they forget about the situation they're in for the moment. Once she remembers, Aurora decides to go to sleep, and Arthur tells Jim that he made an excellent choice in picking her to wake up. Jim starts to leave Aurora little presents here and there, and he even reprograms one of the cleaning bots to deliver a note to Aurora asking her out. For their date, the two of them head to Arthur's bar, and he serves them their favorite drinks. Afterwards, they go to a French restaurant, and Jim asks her how her book is coming along. As a surprise, he takes her to the spacewalking room, and they suit up to go outside. If spacewalking isn't an automatic win for a first date, then there's really no need in trying. You can't top that. If this doesn't get Jim the girl, nothing will. Even as depressed as he was alone the first time he did it, he still seemed to find some grandeur in the experience. Sure enough, as soon as they get back inside, Aurora goes to make out with him. Space will do it every time. After spending the night together, Jim and Aurora start to get really personal everywhere and all the time. Even though they have each other, they still find themselves missing the world and everyone that was in it. Time continues to pass, and Jim has the French robots help him sing happy birthday to Aurora. When they go to Arthur's bar afterwards, Jim and Aurora tell Arthur that there are no secrets between them. Naturally, Arthur thinks this means that Jim told Aurora that he's the one that actually woke her up, and when Jim goes to the bathroom, he starts talking about it to Aurora. When Jim comes back, he notices a change in Aurora, and she asks him if he really did. Jim tells her the truth, and Aurora can't believe what she's hearing. Now that she's heard the truth, Aurora wants nothing to do with Jim, and she heads back to the room to destroy things. Jim takes a second to be by himself since he was about to propose to her, but when he goes back to the room, he finds that all of Aurora's things are moved out. The next morning, he sees her in the dining hall, but when he gets close, she immediately gets up and leaves. What would you do? I mean, you're stuck on this ship with this other guy for at least another 70 years or until you die. Can you forgive them? Or would you just stay mad for the rest of your life? I know a few people that would just wake up more people. If I'm going to suffer, we're all going to suffer. One day, Jim calls Aurora over the intercom, and he tries to explain himself since this is the only way she's going to hear him. He tells her that he was ready to take his own life until he found her that day, but he knows that this is no excuse for what he did. Aurora makes it very clear that she doesn't care why he did what he did, and that night, Jim starts to notice more alarming system issues with the Avalon. Jim heads to the bar to see Arthur, and he finds Aurora there. Once she leaves, she listens to some messages that had been left by her friends for her when she woke up and it seems to open her heart and mind to other possibilities. What's the thing that Jim does to make Aurora soften up? He plants a tree in the middle of the atrium like a little park, which is funny since most people pretty much remember Chris Pratt from Parks and Rec. Suddenly, they hear a voice come over the intercom that introduces himself as Gus. Jim and Aurora run to the atrium where they find Gus admiring the tree in the atrium. Gus takes him up to the bridge that he'd been trying to get into for so long, and Gus tries to scan the ship for what's wrong. He sends Jim and Aurora out to get readings from different terminals, and Gus goes to check the pods in the hibernation area. He quickly realizes that Jim woke up Aurora, and he heads back up to the bridge. 
When Aurora brings back her pad, he sees that there are multiple shutdowns all over the ship. She asks if he saw what Jim did to her pod, and she tries to point out that what Jim did is murder. Gus says one of my favorite quotes ever here, but a drowning man will always try and drag somebody down with him. It ain't right, but it's what they do. Don't forget that. It'll save you a lot of time wondering why people do what they do. Suddenly, Jim shows up with more broken robots, and Gus starts to show signs of sickness. Gus agrees to rest a couple hours, and he ends up coughing up blood in his bathroom. After almost dying thanks to a gravity failure, the group meets up at the bridge, and they try to come up with a game plan. If they don't come up with one quickly, the entire ship will die. Meanwhile, Gus finds out that he's only got a few hours left to live, and he tells Jim and Aurora to fix the ship. Gus takes his final breaths, and the ship's systems seem to go critical. Jim and Aurora head to the engineering deck, and they try to find where the issue is. They end up coming across a breach in the hull that almost sucks Aurora out into space, but they manage to plug the hole temporarily. They follow the path of the meteor, and they find that it hit the reactor control panel. I'm sorry, you're a basic engineer. Almost like a carpenter compared to the rocket engineer you should be for this. And Aurora's a writer and journalist. What's she going to do? Interview the reactor? Somehow, Jim has ideas on how to fix the reactor. He tries to fix it, but it turns out that the door to the outside isn't opening. Jim decides that he's going out to release the hatch manually, and he's leaving Aurora inside to handle the release inside. She tearfully tells him to come back when he's done, and he heads out to the outside hatch. When he gets to the door, he finds out that he has to stay there and hold it manually as Aurora releases the nuclear energy. With the ship running out of time, it's the only option. He holds his heat shield as best as he can, and he tells Aurora to release the energy. Aurora reluctantly releases the energy, and John holds the door while being blasted by the energy. Eventually, he ends up getting blasted so hard that the tether snaps, and he floats off towards the thrusters of the ship. He calls back to tell Aurora his final goodbye, but she suits up to go get him. Once she spots him, she pushes off, but her tether is just short enough she can't reach him. Luckily, she grabs his broken tether, though. She brings his body back to the med bay, and she uses it to bring him back to life. After recovering, Jim finds out the med bay has the ability to put someone to sleep again, but someone has to be outside of it to put in the command. He tells her that she has to go in, but she knows that means she'd never see him again. She decides to continue living on Avalon with him, and the years pass. 88 years later, the Avalon makes it to Homestead 2, and the passengers are woken up. They listen to a recording of Aurora's book, and they see that Jim and Aurora created their own ecosystem on the ship. Then the titles roll. I know this movie got broken down by critics when it came out, but I can't help but love it. For a modern romance movie, it was great. The soundtrack definitely helps too. Give it a shot. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more like this one. Comment what you think I should watch next, and I'll see you in the next video.